Perfect. You're all set. Have a good meeting. Thank you, Seth. Okay. We have everybody in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the June 4th uh, Situa Conservation Fifth, Fifth. Fifth. Conservation Fifth. Meeting. A couple of quick things to read here. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternative means of public access pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. And the Situate Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during meetings, we ask that all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there's disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. We ask our committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards and support and respect our community. Thank you. So we have an agenda. Are there any additions or omissions to the agenda? I don't have any, Frank. Okay. Um, could I get a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda as written. Thanks, Penny. A second? A second, second from Jen. Ooh. Okay. I'll take Sorry. that one from Jen. I know. Okay. Uh, gentlemen Sorry, will Brandon. be courteous. That's okay. I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> I don't know if they'll stay courteous through the whole meeting, Jen, but we'll let them start okay. out that way. We'll get there. Uh, um, Okay. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Did we say we do not have Doug? Correct. Um, not. and then uh, and we. Yeah. How about Andy? Try everybody. No, else. Andy. No, Andy. This evening. So Richard, Penny made the motion. Jen seconded it. Brendan. Yes. And Frank. Yes. Great. Thanks. Okay. So we start out with a continuance one uh, eight seventeen country way. The applicants requested that this get continued again until August seventeenth. Seventh. August seventh. Thanks. The glasses. We know. I should be able to see it. it it's big enough. Sorry. Um, August seventh. I'll make a motion to continue eight seventeen country way to August seventh, twenty twenty three. Second. Second. From Penny, all in favor, Jen? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. And then 162 Central Ave, there's a request to continue this one to June 26th. I'll make a motion to continue 162 Central Ave to June 26, 2023. Second. Richard, by Penny, all in favor, Jen? Yes. And Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Thank you. 19 Situate Trail. Let's see. Open that one on yes. um, June 5th at 6 p.m. The Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citrus Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Brent and Jennifer Woodis for work related to constructing two additions at a single family dwelling located at 19 Situate Trail Situate. About it is an inter other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting will be available on the agenda posted on the website. So who do we have for that one? Brad Good Holmes evening. is on the line. Thanks, Amy. Good evening, members of the commission. Brad Holmes with ECR on Good behalf Brad. of Brad and Jennifer Woodis for their property at 19 Situa Trail. I believe Jennifer is listening in on the meeting as well this evening. Um, we've submitted a notice of intent for improvements to their single family home at 19 Situa Trail. There's a bordering vegetative wetland in the, the northeast portion of their property with a finger that kind of runs up into the yard. As you can see, we've delineated that and it's been located by uh, James McGrath, uh, fresh land surveyor. Um, the site contains a single family home with a deck, patio, paved driveway, lawn and landscaping. 
And what they're looking to do is to propose an addition or well, two additions. Uh, the first addition is located on the east side of the house um, over the existing patio and home. And the west addition is located on the westerly side of the house. Um, I can share my screen if that helps, or Amy, if you want to move down to the proposed conditions, I can, can do that. And I can also pull up a photograph of oh, the we got it. property as well. Okay. Um, so here's the project. The proposed addition on the, the east side of the house is over the existing home and, and patio and deck. The Any of the disturbance will be reconstructed around the, the deck and patio. That addition closest to the 50 foot buffer zone is a, is a frost wall type uh, foundation, so it's not a full foundation. The addition further away from the wetland, uh, just beyond the 50 foot buffer zone on that westerly side of the house is a full full foundation proposed to situate the, the new uh, addition. So all works within existing maintained areas. Uh, it has minimal impact to the wetland resource areas. We'll certainly install silt stocks prior to the start of work. Uh, it's a fairly simple project. I'll leave it at that and open any questions you may have. Okay. Um, Penny? No, it, it looks fine to me. Can somebody unmute Doug Auberg? Sorry, Penny. No, that's fine. I'm all set. Okay. Um, then I would go to Jen. Um, I, uh, can you just clarify for me which uh, foundation was the frost wall versus which one was the full one? Sure. The frost wall is the foundation on the east side of the house closest to the wetland, which is within the existing structures. Uh, the garage, by the patio okay. right, right, I was like, right near I, the driveway yeah I'm like I don't know which way is east sure. um and that was the frost wall okay the, um, the larger addition will have a full foundation on the other side of the house okay um I think I'm okay for now um Brendan Uh, I don't. I don't have any questions at the moment. Um, Doug, have you had time to look at that? Yeah, I. I was here. I just was muted, um, so I heard the presentation. And it. it um, I don't really have any questions for it. Um, the one. The only question is: There's no po topography on this plan. Did. Do we have any if a fill associated with that proposed addition? Um. I don't have topography to kind of confirm that it's it's a flat yard, um, so that area of the site shouldn't involve any grading, any significant grading in any means. And the the addition over to the uh, over the structures is is flat as well. There is a photo I did include a photo in the notice of that easterly addition. You can see that area. I did I didn't get a picture of that side the other side of the house, but it is a fairly flat lawn area. Okay. Do you, do you need maybe some, um, you know, erosion control, silt sock or something? We'll definitely need a silt sock prior to the installation of work. Okay. Just around the work areas. Yeah, because you're digging a foundation. Yeah. So, yeah, there's always a chance the hole's open and we get a <laughs> big storm or something. Yeah. Right. All right. That That's that's that that's good so that that should cover it thanks um did i cover everybody no you forgot me and i'm hurt. oh i'm sorry richard <laughs> but i have no questions so thank you All right. amy uh yes so I, I mean i think that this is a project that uh you guys can condition it's a house that was built in 1959 um and you know, so the the area where the additions are going, A is either covered with house and deck or um, you know, it's within your 50 to 100 foot buffer. Um Brad, are, are there gonna be some trees that are going taken down? I mean, 
looks like a pretty um, level, you know, treed lot with a lot of deciduous trees. I'm just out of curiosity, or are they gonna um, be able to sneak it in without taking down trees? And then um, DEP had no comment, but I, I do think this is project you can condition with orders. I don't think there's any significant trees. It, it's running right up to the house. Whatever kind of landscape foundation plantings will will be removed. And then and, um, I did include in the narrative that any replacement plantings would be native plantings because it's in the buffer zone. Yeah, it doesn't look like the trees are that close. There is a woods line between the properties, but I don't think it is that close to the house. No. Amy, you all set? Um, yeah, I, I I think I am. Yeah, I mean it. It's hard to say because of some of these aerials, it, they're just you know pretty leafy trees, but looks like you could probably sneak in the addition without taking any trees down too. But I just know that um, homeowners seem to get concerned if there's they're they're too close, and so do insurance companies. That's all. We get a lot of tree calls in, in the office. Right. Brad, um, how close is this to the Satuit Brook? Uh, that's close. I did put the locust map in there. Okay. Um, no, it's not. Yeah, it's. It's like in the middle, Frank. Okay. Right. I'm just it's in I'm, the I'm, beginning I of the subdivision. I didn't bring my uh, iPad yeah. either, so I'm. Not in the zone A. <clears throat> When you pull into the Satua Trail, it's uh, it's a few, few few residences up on the left hand side, so it's it's fairly yeah. close. Oh, okay. All right, great. Thanks. I don't. I just I don't have the other thing to yeah. look at. Um, no, I think uh, Doug's comment about coming up with a. Do you want us to pick a distance from the house, twenty five feet out, or something like that, or around the play structure for a location for the silt sock? I can um, sketch one up and then get it to Amy, you know, prior to the order conditions issuance. I think it'd be good. You know, we don't want to have a big stockpile in the backyard or, or whatever, if just so they are aware of the um, who's ever doing the constructions aware. Sure. Um, that. Okay. Um, uh, I'd take a motion. Yeah. I mean, oh, do we have anybody in the audience? Anybody in the audience for this one? That's a negative. We actually have uh, Jennifer. There is somebody with their raised hand. What is might be on? Can we oh. unmute her? Yeah. Unmute Jennifer. Got it. Thank you. Um, the one thing I wanted to call out, Just, Brad, you, you had mentioned a full foundation on the addition when you're looking at this aerial is going to be a full foundation on the left. It's going to be a frost wall for that addition. On the left hand side. Okay. Yeah, and I just want to make sure that was heard. Okay. So less impact. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay. So I'll yep. make a motion to close. Sure. We have a second. Second from Jen. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Doug? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Great. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Have a good, good night. Yeah, you too. Um, 55 Lads Way. The applicant is the James Landing Condominium Association, Merrill Engineers. Um, on uh, June 5th, 2023, during the 6 p.m. meeting, the Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Laurie Robodux for a determination. Oh, I got the wrong one. Sorry. On June 5th, 2023, at the 6 p.m. meeting, the Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of James Landing Condo Association for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Situa Wetlands Bylaws, for activities related to constructing a swale and other landscaping at location 51 Lads Way Situate. 
about it and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meetings available on the agenda posts on the website. Okay. I was looking for Caroline. There's a hand raised. Reese. Yep. Okay, got her. Caroline, you're on. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yep, we got yeah. you. Okay. Um, for the record, my name is Caroline Reese from Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors. I'm representing the applicant, the James River Condominium Association, and that is represented by Walter Eric Floods, who I believe may be on the phone. I don't know if you want to promote him. Um, he's the clerk for the association. He's planning on it. But in the meantime, I'll uh, continue. So this is an RDA presentation uh, for proposed work to improve some stormwater conditions behind building number two um, in the Condominium Association. Uh, there, the Condominium Association has a multiple uh, multi-residence buildings. Right here um, along the plan, you can see the rear side of building number two. And um, further down on the rear, there are in the blue lines wetlands that were flagged. So they're actually uh, bordering vegetative wetlands just north or just above the upper edge of the salt marsh. And uh, this site also has a FEMA flood zone, which is the orange line, and part of the work kind of crosses it on the west side. And so the why we're before you is these units have had, after some extreme storm events, um, slight areas of ponding. Um, if you can see the topography spot shots of the existing, they're just some small low spots that tend to hold water. Mm -hmm. And um, so what they've requested permission to do, what we've decided is to, uh, in the lawn area, regrade the lawn so it's a consistent slope towards this uh, vegetated area that's in the center of the screen. That's not a wetland. It's just a natural growth area, um, mostly dry grasses and some bushes. It's just kind of a natural looking area. So they're proposing a 185 foot by five foot wide swale in the lawn just on the northern border of that growth area. And that would consist of eight inches of gravel and then be covered by six inches of loam and seed. So it virtually look appear like lawn as it is now, but just kind of graded as a place to kind of capture and direct that runoff from the patios consistently, recharge the area. And then also on the east side, um, there's a proposed drain because uh, water tends to collect near that side and it's kind of closer to the pathway. So they're proposing a small area drain that would connect to an existing drainage system that's about 32 feet away. Um, and uh, that's, that's kind of the gist of it. I guess I can open it for questions. Okay. Um, Richard? I'm a little confused on the directions here only because I can't, see. oh, I know I do. I see the compass now. So, um, no, can I hold off, Frank? I, you yep. may want to come back to me, please. Sure. Thank Doug, you. why don't you, uh, this looks like a complicated enough plan for you to weigh in on. I'm flattered, Frank. <laughs> Caroline, the, <clears throat> that that area drain dra connects directly into the manhole to the west, about thirty eight feet away. Yes, Cor yes, correct. Well, that's and the then, proposed drain drain on the west, correct. And then and then you're gonna dig out the swell, and you're gonna put in what you say six inches of washed stone. Is that just to in help encourage water Eight flow? Eight inches, and then correct. Over and then on top of that, six inches of loam and seed, just to kind of encourage yeah. recharge gather and you know hopefully most of it will be recharged if there is any overflow they don't expect you know hard to tell but that area drain is just to capture um anything that may not be recharged but um yeah so um yeah and it's going away from the area drain so it must be 
puddling away. I mean, it's, the swale's draining in the other direction, so it must be puddling a lot right around that area. On the east side, where, where I'm the sorry, air? on my screen, I don't, I don't see my map, but yes, yeah, so on the east side by the drain, just north of the drain is one area that the area is not consistently graded, so there are little puddles, but primarily on that east corner, just north of the drain, does that make sense? Um, yeah, I yeah. So we would reach a high point. I'm sorry at the at the top there, and so some's going to go to the left. Oh, I on see. The screen, some to the right. So Following some is going to topography. Yeah. So t some of it is going to yeah. You probably couldn't get flow all the way no. around. So okay. So I see it now. The high point in the middle, then it's going to some of it's going to drain towards the drain, and go out through the the um the storm drain system that's already there, and then correct the yes, other I'm part sorry. is going to continue in the swale. It'll be grass. Uh -huh. um, do you think you need a and I mean, this is a question. It's not a, sure. even a suggestion, but do you need a any kind of a filter fabric or anything like that to prevent the wash stone from um, collecting well, sediment o over the years? We're thinking it's minor amounts and where it's going to go is into that vegetated area, um, so, that big so circle. Yeah. So we're kind of thinking it's it's a pretty natural. It already kind of goes that way anyway. It's just to kind of encourage. Um, yeah. We could look into that. We didn't propose. No, that. I mean I, it, it was really truly was just a question. Um, sure. Yeah. It's it's uh, not going to be a lot. We don't, you know we don't think or it's. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No. That I mean that should be fine. It's going to be grassed so. Um, any water touching the surface will will have gone through grass anyway. Yes. So um, I mean, it seems seems like a pretty logical fix to me. So no, I, I sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, Doug Penny. No, nope, I'm all set. Jennifer. Uh, no, I. I think I'm good. Brendan? I'm all set, thank you. Anybody in the audience? Being none, Frank. Okay, Amy, do you have any comments? I think this is a really straightforward uh, yeah. landscape, quick landscape project, just to deal with the standing whatever water with like a French drain situation. But in this area is, is actually originally part of like the stormwater management, these areas on the site that are these big areas. That's what I would say that they are based on mm -hmm. review of the um, site design plans. But anyways, yeah, went over this project um, before they submitted with with um, Merrill. And anyways, and appears to meet the requirements of a negative finding. Right. Quick project. Um, do we know how the contractor is gonna access this coming and going because with all the buildings and whatnot are they going to be more towards the wetlands or are they going to be able to come between a building or something any idea i believe through a building um farther up on the screen there's um there's that hatched box that's kind of cut off that's a stockpiling area and there's oh i see there it. and parking so yep. i think yeah, I'll just cut around. I see it. Our screens are all blocking that spot. Yeah, me too. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I don't think there's enough work here for we, uh, erosion control, Doug, or we, anybody. We do have it. It's. I know they got a silt dash. sock, but whereabouts? Yeah. The oh, big red down. line the red, on the bottom. The red yeah. line is way down. Oh, good. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to cut through that natural vegetation, so just kind of right. follow the path. Perfect. Okay. Um, a motion for negative three. Okay, so that's Penny. Second. Second from Jen. Second from all in favor. Richard. Yes. Brendan. Yes. Frank. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Both, uh, yeah, Thank yeah, you very pretty, much. I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um,
number two lighthouse road right no seven seventy abba way yeah on uh june 5th 2023 during a 6 p.m meeting the Sigma conservation commission will act on the request of laurie rubido for determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaws for activities related to repairing a septic at a single family dwelling at number 70 Arbor Way Situate. Mass abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting is available on the agenda posted on the town website. Oh, coming down. Yeah. We've got Greg Morse on the phone here on the call. Go ahead, Greg. Good evening. This is Greg Morse, registered engineer with Morse Engineering. I'm representing the property owner, Lori Robidoux. Uh, the property is located 70 Arbor Way Drive. As was just read into the record, this is an RDA application associated with a septic system upgrade at her house. The property is relatively flat in topography. It's about half an acre in size. Uh, it has an existing four-bedroom home with a failed septic system located at it. Looking at the plan here, on the left-hand side of the page, uh, highlighted in blue, is the edge of a very well-defined man-made drainage ditch. Uh, that drainage ditch contains an intermittent stream within it. That stream is classified as a tributary to the town's drinking water supply. Uh, there is no bordering vegetated wetland adjacent to the stream. It is a very well cut, very well defined ditch. Extending off of that in red is the 50 foot buffer and in green, the 100 foot buffer. Uh, what we've proposed here is we've proposed a new septic system, which is a micro fast treatment system, a pump chamber, and then a pressure dosed geoflow drip dispersal system. The tanks are all located in the front yard outside of the 100-foot buffer, um, but a small portion of the leaching field, the geoflow field, is located in the 100-foot buffer. It's at a minimum distance of 90 feet uh, from the intermittent stream. Uh, this is an advanced treatment type of septic system. Uh, we don't expect that there would be any impacts to the stream as a result of replacing the currently failed system with this new treatment system. It's in an area that's existing lawn area. No vegetation is proposed to be removed. It would be restored with grass uh, post-construction. I turn it over to you. So I was eating the candy bar that they left here for me. Sorry. Um, Brendan? <laughs> Um, no, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, Jen? Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm good. Okay. Um, Penny? Um, can I, the cesspool, I don't know, remove, okay. No, I'm all set. Um, Doug? No, no questions at all. Pretty. Richard? All these straight, straightforward ones. No questions yeah. at all. No questions. <laughs> um, Richard? No questions. Amy? That the, yeah, this is great um, to see a failed system, uh, you know, be replaced with a compliant Title V system. It, it does need a variance um, to go, go in front of the Board of Health mid-June. But I, I think that, um, anyways, it appears to meet the requirements of a negative three finding. So, but all I got. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? Does not appear so. Okay. Make a motion. Um, let, or, let me yeah. just let me, let me um take one quick look, Penny. Yeah. Greg, is this um is the lawn there? 
pretty much go right to the um the stone wall with the trees and whatnot. So in the backyard, the stone wall goes right up to the edge of the stream. Uh, sorry, the lawn goes right up to the stream. Okay. Yep. Um but this is all in the front. This is in the front, and there is a between the side of the house and the left side lot line, um, there's about a 15 foot wide thick hedge as well as a fence between our work and in the backyard. The backyard is pretty well cut off. Uh huh. I guess I'm more wondering. I mean, you know, these get built and they've been there for a long time, but it it looks like their their lawn and everything goes right into the resource area, right? Yeah, so there's probably four or five houses in a row right on this side of Arbor Way Drive that, you know, have that scenario. It's not a it's not a wetland that is out back, but there is, is a wetland further up Arbor Way Drive that then had this ditch that was dug essentially along the rear lot line of these houses. Okay. Um, so it's not a vegetated wetland. It's really well defined. Um I got it. I didn't even see that part of it. So there's a 12 foot drainage easement and that runs along that. That's what um, it is. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. All right. That's it for me. Make the um, motion for a negative three then. That's Penny. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Richard. Richard, all in favor. Doug? Yes. Jen? Yep. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Right. Thank hey, you. Thanks, Greg. Good evening. Um, on June 5th, 2023, during the 6 p.m. meeting, the Central Conservation Commission will act on the crest of Jeff. Is it Burgersalt? If I said that wrong, I apologize. For Burgles. the termination of applicability in Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Situate Wetlands Bylaws for activity related to replacing four deck footings at a single family dwelling at two lighthouse roads situated but as other interested parties are invited to attend information to access the meetings available posted on the website atlantic coast is on the phone here hey jed good evening jed hannon with atlantic coast engineering can everybody hear me okay we got yeah. you thanks jed okay great so this particular property, as you're probably well aware, it's land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, it's, it's in the flood zone right along the Situate Harbor. Um, it it abuts both the AE and the VE, VE16, AE15. Uh, what happened was the it's a two-tiered deck in the rear facing the water. Um, during a nor'easter storm this past winter, um, they had six by six wood posts that got wiped out essentially um, from wave action, boulder movement. Um, this is a pretty decent sized armor rock there as well. Um, and so there's, I can show you photos, but basically there's, there's temporary shims and um, yeah. posts in know. place. Look at so that. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, exactly. So it's just not going to last. So, um, and we don't want to put wood posts back in. So what we've proposed is uh, concrete uh, posts basically with footings um and then basically put the rocks that are there back in place so fairly straightforward just need a more robust system because of the damage that seems to be recurring here when there's significant storm damage um i'd be happy to answer any questions you may have thank you thank you oh hold on okay oh one other comment um sorry we did speak with greg de caesar about this um and I looped Amy into an email and, and he was on board for, you know, doing this as an RDA and he was fine with the system we had proposed. Um, that is the only additional comments I want to add. Thank you. Once. Yeah. Um, and before you get too deep in it, Frank, I, I think you should hear from me. Yeah. I actually have to look at the photo. Um, that would yeah. Be so good. the RDA for the replacement of the posts would would be okay but but not for any work on the engineering structure so and, and this plan seems to indicate that they're removing and replacing rocks on the slope so so that's that's not okay but but the posts are okay 
Oh. Can we go back to the photo for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can see there's there's just, you know, a temporary blob of concrete with some rocks mixed in with some some temporary posts. Um, and again, the wood posts just don't work in this environment. So we're it's a remove and replace, but instead of wood, we're we're doing concrete. So that's why Greg DeCesar was was fine with it as as we had detailed it. So obviously some rocks will need to be removed, um, you know, footing footing placed and then posts come up from there. Hmm. So where we're looking at those blocks of wood all stacked up, Jed, is that where you're proposing the sauna tubes or the concrete piers to go? So, yeah, basically the rocks will need to be removed um, and we'll have to get down to terra firma and then come up with sauna tubes and then, uh, you know, tie into the existing joists and stringers at, at four locations as shown mm -hmm. on the drawing. Can we go back to the plan again, Jen? Sorry. So there's, there's four locations. You can see the four squares. How deep do you think terra firma is, Jed? I'd say three feet, Frank, approximately. Okay. So it's, it's, the mean uh, high water line is is down down the bottom, um, and you know we we drew the it's just it's basically a revetment that's there existing, and it may look as though we're making any making changes to it, but we're really we're really not. It's just to make access in order to do the work, and then they'll put put back in place as as neatly and best as possible to reestablish what was there before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, <clears throat> Richard. Yeah, I'm a little um, confused by what Amy said. I certainly understand the posts, removing the rocks, uh, the the boulders, whatever it is, and then putting them back. But I'm not sure that we. She says we we can't do it all as an RDA. So that needs to be clarified to me at least. Everybody else might be a lot smarter than I am. That doesn't take much. And um. But otherwise, no, I understand why it has to be done. And um, where he's already cleared for the concrete, I don't have any problem, any issues. Okay. Um, Doug? Um, thanks, Amy, for clarifying that. Because that, that kind of was my question. Like, th this looks like more or less a seawall. But looking at... Um, up and down the houses it looks like it's in rough shape kind of all over the place so uh, my only question was how you know how you get in out of there um that um i mean I, I, i'm fine with it as an rda i i, I don't know how amy we produce language that specifies what happens to the structure that's there like it they've got to move some stuff out of the way just to get the um, you know, sauna posts in there, and so is like replace in kind clear enough? Or I mean, they, they have an opportunity to make it a little bit better, but um, I, I, are you clear on how you you can word that for an RDA? Yeah, I was going to definitely put qualifiers in there on what they they can and can't do. And and here's the thing is that there is no access to, to this property. You know what I mean? Like the water comes right up so that they're going to have to come in through the side. And I'm not sure how they, they get a sonnet tube in there, but it's not by removal of the whole wall and rebuilding it. That that's that that can't happen. Um, but but so, pieces of it have to be, yeah. some of the rocks have to be moved out of the way so you can get a, yeah. if, if yeah. he's going down at least three feet. Um, well, so maybe yeah, they, tough, they drill, them, drill the hole down and then insert the tube. I think they're going to have to be creative for sure. Um, right, exactly. So to... we're not exactly sure what's under there till we, you know get in there with a mini excavator and remove some of the debris. Um, we do know, and we saw that 
the town accesses um, parts of the coastline from Museum Beach. So I know there's there's public access that way. And I believe the contractor's planning to use a, a narrow width mini excavator. Um, no, no, there's not access through Museum Beach. There isn't. There's an, there's, there's an easement on, a, a, there's a public easement on the um, right side of, like you can go to DPW and find out where there's a public easement, but there, there is, there's no beach access. In the okay, so we can clarify that with, with DPW. Yeah, this this may have to be done with a crane or something like that, or through the I don't know, bobcat okay. on the side of the house. Okay, we can we can clarify that with with D, uh, DPW and, and the contractor. Um. Doug, do you have any other? No, no, I'm just I'm 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 having some empathy here for trying to construct this. It's going to be a tough build out, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the houses are very tight. You can't get between them. It doesn't look like so. Yeah, um, but it, it you know in principle, it, I'm absolutely fine with it. Okay, um, Penny. Yeah, well, part of the problem is they've made these houses so big now, so you can't get between them. Um, no, he definitely has to do something. He's going to lose the whole front of the house, all those decks. Um, I personally don't have a problem with moving the rocks out and then getting the sa sauna tubes in and then replacing the rocks underneath between the sauna tubes. You know, so you would still have that protection there. But the whole thing is crum crumbling. I mean, it's they got to do something. But I don't envy them. I don't even know how they're going to get in there. Good luck. Okay. Um, Jen? Um, I agree with Penny. Okay. I'm good. Uh, Brendan? Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything to add. I guess something needs to be done, though. Yes. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this? Jen, can you switch that back to the photo for a second? Thank you. Um, so I, I think you're, Jed, you're hearing the, the concerns from Amy and from the members that this looks like kind of Pandora's box here. We understand that the applicants got to do something to brace their, their property. Um, I'm a little confused where all the posts and stuff are. Um, sure, but... I can explain that. So it's they're basically in line with where the posts you see in the photos. Okay. Yep. And we but it looks it, it looks like there's another set of posts that come down from the support the roof above that. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, those those supports, um, if you look under the deck, are in place. So the okay. load from above goes down. And you can see the the support that's underneath. So nothing was compromised in that area. It's just these outer four. Right. Um, so um you know, some when you start to dig around that, you've got that mess of concrete that's poured over rocks and stuff, which is gonna wind up having to be broken up to some degree um to get the footings in. Sure. Right. And <laughs> The size of those rocks, I, I don't think a, a really small machine is going to be adequate um, to to move those. I mean, some of those rocks look like two ton or more stones. So there's a fair amount of, of, of digging that's got to occur there. And they're going to have to, I'm assuming, work with the tide. Um, at some point, I'm, I'm 
thinking they're just going to find a spot where they think they got enough rocks and whatnot and try to pour some kind of a footing. Um, so, so Dern, if I could just answer a couple of your questions. So Dern, yeah. a, mean, a, a normal mean high water, the, yeah. the water level elevation wise is down at the toe of the revetment. Okay. Now, if, it, if it's a king tide, it's a totally different story. But for the most part, normal high tides doesn't doesn't really impact this area. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the the equipment size needed, I, I know the the site contractor. Um, I'm sure will size the the boom capacity in order to handle the rock sizes, so we can measure them up and and use the unit weight to determine the heaviest rocks there. So I'm sure we can take care of that. Um, and then to one of your other points, I know that there's going to have to be some temp shoring put in place in right. order to support the deck. So it's not compromised. So it really is kind of dental work. Um, the owner knows the site contractor. So it's, you know, we're not definitely not, this is not a bull in the China shop type of project. It's got to be kind of slow <laughs> dental work and put the shoring in and and then remove these pieces with either uh, saw cutting or a, a mini hoe ram type of thing. And, it's just, it's going to be slow work. It's going to take some time and um, it's going to be done carefully. Okay. I, I think what we want to be sure it doesn't happen is that this doesn't um, get to be a much larger project that really should have had a, an order of conditions. Um, you know, we don't want to hear back from the applicant that they couldn't do what they want. I think it's important to let Amy know as soon as this work is starting, maybe a pre-con Amy with the with the um with the contractor be really clear on the um scope of the work and, and what they can and can't do so this doesn't turn into um a, a bigger project that wasn't adequately permitted or or reviewed. I know you know, the bunch of that stuff down there, that that's not really a wall. It's just stones that people have piled up to protect their homes. But. Um, right. Yes, Amy. Uh, yes, uh, Penny. I just went on Zillow and the biggest problem is going to be to get to it. This house is a monster. And there's nothing on either side. So I don't see how they're going to get a piece of equipment there. And I think Amy's right. They're going to have to use a crane. I, I mean, if you go on Zillow, it's there's no no way to this deck. Well, a crane won't do the work yeah. on that. I, I don't know what they're going to do. How? Sure. But I'm concerned now of how they're going to get to it to do the work. So... Penny, great point. If I could just comment, so yeah. one of the ideas I had ex was exactly that: is is a is a crane truck that has enough boom length to to pick a excavator to to load it down into this area. Um, okay. If we have to do that, we we I'm sure the contractor will. Um, we are going to try to see what the public access is, um, if, if it's possible to you know come come along down by the um, either the boat ramp or the nearest public access to to access this so that we, we don't have to do the crane, but worst yeah. case scenario, that, that would be the case. Okay. Cause I, I thought it was the house I thought it was, and now I know it is. And there's just no way in from the street into this property, you know, to take a piece of equipment in. Oh, absolutely. It's very tight access. It's yeah, yeah. It's all house on a, on a small lot. Yes, <laughs> it's a big one. Nine bedrooms or something. It's big. But yeah, we have no right. problem. We can we can certainly coordinate um, the pre-construction yeah. with with Amy to make sure everybody's on board and we're doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah, I think Amy definitely has to keep keep an eye on this one. Okay. So do you All want right. to vote for the negative, Frank? Um, I will take a motion. We're a negative th two, I believe. Amy, is that right? Negative two or three? Yeah, it well, so you're working in resource area, so it's a it's a you it's a negative two and three slash three, three. You know, I mean, what but whatever with a bunch of qualifiers. Yeah. 
And um, I don't know, I just re reiterate that DEP does not want any work on like in the resource area um, without orders. You know what I mean? So like, this is one thing to replace these footings, but to dig up the, the coastal bank and the beach, that that's another matter. So um, however they can do it and avoid that, Je Jed assured me that there's a way to do it. So um, I guess Please. you piecemeal it in. I like have to keep you that's right. informed, Amy. Absolutely. Yeah. Get down there and see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been to the site, um, obviously, but um, yeah, it's it's a tricky one with with tricky access, and and so I'm sure they'll be creative. Okay. All right. So we have a motion from Penny, right? Yeah, a two and three. We have a do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Jen. I think take Richard Jen. beat you. Take, take think, Jen. Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> all in favor, Jen? Uh, Doug, rather. Yes, Jen. Yes. Brendan. Yes. And Frank, yes. Great. Thanks, Jed. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Um, 37 Rachel's Way on June uh, 5th, 2023, during the 6 p.m. meeting, the, town of Situ the Situate Conservation Commission will act on the request of Richard Durkin for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaws for activity related to adding fill a single family dwelling at location at 37 Rachel's Way situate. About as other interested parties are invited to attend. The information to access the meeting will be available on the agenda posted on the website. Um, and who do we have on for this one? Oh, have, Mr. Uh, Durkin is on the phone. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, I submitted this application. Um, and you just can you just give your full name and address, sir, please? Full name is Richard Durkin. Address is 37 Rachel's Way in Situate. Good evening. Um, okay. the, the space behind this unit is um, very, um, it's, it's got a slope, as you can see in the picture. It was left that way by the developer. And I recently had um, a bunch of briar patch that had been growing over the years removed because um, it was growing right onto the deck and I, it was becoming a real problem. And then I realized how this particular slope was um, having some potentially erosion problems, which is right at the footings of the deck. So my concern was to try and put more soil there so that we don't have to worry about the erosion issue at the deck and give a little bit more buffer between the ever-growing um, briar patch that runs behind this property. Um, so it's about as, it, from the deck, from the lower part of the deck to the base where you see that stick right in the picture, Yeah, that's 10 feet, okay? And if you look at the site plan, um, that's where I drew in the area to fill. No further than that. I um, spoke to Chris Leach, and I think Chris is still on the. You on this uh, meeting, Chris? Do you see him, Jen? Nope. Yeah, I, I see him on here. You can continue on. Okay. Um, I spoke with. Chris and he gave me some idea of how we could um, fill that. And he talked about putting in six to eight inches of riprap with perforated pipe pitched from the house and another 30 yards of riprap on top of that with filter fabric and then six to eight inches of loam with seed. So it would look like the, re the, the rest of the property. It would be seeded and it would, um, provide more stabilization behind the deck, not to impact any vegetative water area. Yeah, so Frank's having a little bit of technical difficulty right now. Um, but it looks like the but, wetlands come up. Yeah, there. but I, I'll, I, I'll give you the... Uh, the background, I kind of wish Frank was on the call, though, so maybe we should wait. 
to see. I think maybe he had to reboot. But but anyways, uh, as most of you probably know, this was a 40B yeah. project um, that was permitted in 2001 to 2004, appealed, double appealed, um, Walden Woods um, was the name of it. But anyway, so, so this project as is was built out to its maximum extent at that time. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid what, what Mr. Durkin uh, did by removing the briars in, in there was disturb the buffer to the BBW and the BBW um, resource area. Um, and anyways, I had advised him that this would maybe be a notice of intent, but but really, I think it's just a hard no. Um, maybe some some soil to do some surface stabilizing, but um, not as a request for determination. And this project was fully built out um, as a 40B. Um, and as a matter of fact, there is no C of C um, on the superseding order. Um, Amy, I, I lost connection, so I've missed a good part of this, um, so far. Has any of the members had a chance to ask no. questions? No. Or? no, no, So I just gave a, a little bit of like the history of the site itself. And I, I understand that. And I, I heard you talking about a 40 B and, uh, the fact that they didn't have any, when they do that, they don't have any distance to the, to the wetlands, but that's that's part of that project was there any permit or request to have the brush and stuff worked no. on that mr durkin did already no okay um, so he had... okay um yeah. we ready to start down the list of members yeah yes okay um penny I think we have a problem here. Um, it's quite a slope. The wetlands, I mean, it's right there, Frank. Right. And it says, I don't know what the answer is. I. It's a shame. I think maybe we just replant it with wetland, <clears throat> you know, type plants. I don't think we should be bringing boulders or anything else in there, per personally. Um, yeah, it's, I understand the brambles, you wanted to get rid of them, but uh, I just think he needs to plant it out. I don't know what else to say, Frank. It, it's a I guess what I missed was what Mr. Um, Durkin was proposing. Oh, yeah. So I apologize. For some reason, it just disconnected. Okay, so Frank, I was um, speaking with Chris Leeds of Northern Oaks. Mm -hmm. and he came over, we looked at it. He said with a, with a minimal amount of effort, he could, he could put in six to eight inches of riprap with perfor perforated pipe and then cover that with another 40 yards of riprap with fabric, six to eight inches of loom, and then seed it. So what you'd be looking at is seeded 10 foot section right there on that picture okay. with a slope. Okay, thank you. Right, and the uh, RDA calls out 80 yards of fill, Frank. Okay. All right, sorry, I just didn't catch part of that. So go, we'll go back to members and Jen. Uh, I'm I'm at a quandary. I, I don't believe we can support the proposed plan. Okay. So I don't I don't <laughs> I don't have any other questions. Brendan. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Jen. I, I can't. I mean, we're filling in. This is the the wetland that we're right. This isn't even a buffer. If I'm if I'm seeing this correctly. Well, right, you're the, right on it. 
Yeah, so that's that's really the I guess so when you have a 40 BS they could build right up to it and and they did. Is, <laughs> they did and this is where where it's at now. So I, I can't support filling this in. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um Richard? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with um with Penny. Uh, I can't support the fill either. It's it goes against everything everywhere else in town that we we don't allow um but i i would think a better or at least more tenable solution would be to um, revegetate with salt tolerant plants and any number of them and give it a little time and you might have a chance to do something that way um but with the fill and everything i feel bad uh for mr durkin but um it, i couldn't i couldn't support this the way it is okay uh doug yeah i'm probably not going to say anything different but i i I was looking for a little clarification. It uh, and the plan that has a little highlighted green area looks like the work is outside of the wetlands. Um, yeah, like, yeah. The, but the picture itself kind of looks like there's been removal of wetlands area already. Looks like maybe even some debris in there and the stones were there. I don't know if those were already there or brought in. Um, so so that's one is just the, the 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 limit of the work i'm i'm a little fuzzy on but um the other part is what what's what's causing the erosion do you do you know that i mean is that just rainwater like that's yeah. just surface water comes down and and it erodes that slope yeah, away surface water i mean we have we have drainage from some of the roofs but not all of the roofs but yeah the it's it's surface water so, i mean it, it just seems like more erosion that you're looking at than what you would think unless i mean it doesn't look like that much that looks like it drops a couple feet no it's um if, if you stood where that stick is to yeah. the yeah. bottom to the bottom of the deck it's roughly seven feet because I, I oh that's I, really so the, the the yeah the picture doesn't doesn't look that way okay right. so that's right. a significant slope down there that's so I, I think what would be what could be supported, at least for me, would be vegetating the slope. Um, yeah. And, and um, you know, with the, there's all kinds of attractive vegetation that you could put in there that grows thick. Salt. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like even that's not a saltwater marsh, though, Richard. That's just fresh water. Um, okay. Yeah. So there, there could be a okay. thick growth even of more, something. Even more availability then. Yep. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, and that, and that would that would control the erosion. And I'm not sure what the perforated pipe was going to do. I, I'm curious about that, but um, and it, it and it's it it seems like the water must be flowing down around your house. Well, where does that all come from? It's it's a surface water in this area, and I'll yeah. tell you, we we had a hundred year rain two years ago, right. Two two years ago, summer we had a hundred year rain, and this area was not underwater. Right. Um, no, I'm just like it, it's. It seems like there should have been there, like the 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 control up upstream. It seems to be insufficient if that much surface water is running off. And that that it's causing that much erosion, but um, but anyways, I I think that would be something to look at. Would be um, this is new erosion that it looks like it's erosion new just because they stripped the vegetation off. You look back on the aerial photos; you can go all the way back to when it was built in twenty fourteen. It's totally it's a filled site and this was the limit of work and, and this is how they shaped it and they vegetated it they planted it out with grass it's always been vegetated um oh okay it's looks it appears stable throughout like i go through all these photos from today back to 2014 i don't it's it was only destabilized recently when they took the vegetation off so i i agree planting it is probably the best solution um, it clearly you can see from the the and on the bottom it gets wet, so they, you know, they're gonna gonna want to put some wet 
species down the bottom and then probably seed out the sides the way it was. Um, Doug, can I jump in here? So I, I think yeah, I missed ahead. part of all of the conversation. So I may repeat a few things that Amy said, but this project, uh, Walden Woods, Rachel's Way, was a 40B that was pretty controversial. And the folk, the people that developed it um, were extremely difficult in the town working with it. The Conservation Commission had a lot of calls from neighbors and complaints with flooding and people trying to do what they were supposed to do. Amy said there's no CFC been done um, for this project. And unfortunately, now the owners in here have to bear the weight of, of some of the things that were done before. And um, so, you know, you, you can look at that topography that's there and see that that sloped off pretty quickly in, in that area. I, I think I'm, and Mr. this is for Mr. Durkin as well. I think more than just Northern Oak is a good company and they understand some things, but what we really need to see is a plan that addresses this as a wetlands. And there are materials that can be planted there and there can be things to done mm -hmm. to to uh, um, enhance that, make it look a little bit better and 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 help it. But the answer of of dumping in a bunch of loom and regrading it and having more of a lawn there is is not something that the commission can approve. Um, because that was a wetlands before. And <clears throat> unfortunately, your deck gets about as close as anybody does in, in that location. So I, I'd either go back to, to Northern Oaks and talk to them about a, a different kind of plan to deal with that, or maybe they could work in collaboration with a wetlands person that could give them some guidance on some revegetation that the commission could condition. Um, Amy, is there a way to keep this RDA open so that they can just come back in with a new plan under this filing so they don't have to refile? Sure. And, and what? And just uh, keep it open for a planting plan? Keep, keep the RDA open. He doesn't have to do another application. Mm -hmm. We can continue this for a period of time so that they can come up with a plan that we can and then bring that back to us to review. Um, that way, Mr. Durkin doesn't have to spend more money to re-advertise or, or submit another plan. Do you, if you feel we, well, that we it, could do it that way, or we could do it as an enforcement. I mean, but <clears throat> as in, in just you know, require replication. But I mean, we don't usually keep RDAs open. It's a little complicated. We we want the right people to propose the right plans. Right. I well, I mean, it's either that. So you either give it if you if you have a, a positive determination, then that means that he's got to file a notice of intent, which we and, don't want to happen. Right. So, and then we have an enforcement, which they have to come back with a plan. But we already have an RDA in front of us that the applicants applied for. Um, so, I think maybe between his landscaper and, and maybe the Northern Oak needs to reach out to, to a wetlands person and, and have somebody come up with a plan that we could condition or, or yeah, Frank, I think that's fine to do it that way, but I think we put, need to put a timeline on it though. Well, let's, ex let's do an extent, Mr. Durkin, do you think that you, I mean, it's going to take a little time to pull together what we're asking. Um, I'm thinking that a, a month, um, at, at least a couple of weeks. I don't know when's our next meeting. Twenty sixth. Three weeks. Do you want to continue it for three weeks and see if you can? Sure, we can continue it for three weeks. I can I can speak with um, Northern Oaks and and see if they have any thoughts. So if we come back with a plan, it would be a plan for plantings. Plantings. But oh, only up to the point where. We go out 10 feet. Well, I, I'm not sure what that distance is. I mean, it kind of looks to me like there might be 10 feet from the deck to the point where that wetlands was was drawn. Typically, we don't allow people to work that close to a wetlands. You've got a disturbed area, and we want it to be replanted. So um, 
I, I think you you work with um with Northern Oaks and if they need to get a wetlands person. I, I think also I mean you're you're doing this on your own, but are you part of an association? Yes. So I don't know, Amy, are you saying that this never received no. full um certificate of compliance? I well we don't have a copy of a certificate of compliance. Like if there was one, we don't have a copy. Well, so the board the board had to go out and I, I wasn't I'm actually a board member. Okay. Back when I first moved here, I'm the first owner of the place. Okay. Um, I was on the board, but I know some board members had to go out because the builder did not get it signed off. Compliance was not signed off. We had to go out, hire our attorney. We had to go through all the motions to get that certificate. Right. So right, well, why don't you, why don't we continue this till then? Talk with Northern Oak. If they don't feel like they can put enough together, you know, maybe they can, or you can work with a wetlands person to come up with the right vegetation. We'd like to see this restored. And I think you can come up with something that might look good in your backyard. And at the same time, we can achieve what we'd like to see there. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, the vegetation, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what the vegetation is going to do. It's going to stabilize that area, and it's not going to have mud running down the slope every time it rains. We don't want to see more siltation go into okay. the wetlands. Yep. So we want to get that planted with plants that are consistent with a more natural area as opposed to filling it in and having a continuation of a lawn. I got you. Okay. We can do that. I think I think those you could come up with something that looks nice and and fits the the requirements that we'd have for a wetlands area. Okay. And, I just um, make it clear, Frank, that for North, Northern Oak, we're not bringing fill in. Right. Vegetation. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we're going to vegetate what's there. You know, a little topsoil. That's one thing to get the plants growing. But there's some nice vegetation you can put out back that won't be the briars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. um, I'll work with them and um, we'll put this on the agenda for the next time. We'll put it on for the 26th. Okay. And if, as soon as you have something pulled together, why don't you get it into the office so Jen or Amy can get the information out to the commission. And Okay. Because we'd like to have it at least a week before our meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. So I'd make a motion to continue 37 Rachel's Way mm. to June 26th. So, so moved. That's Penny. Second. Second from Jen. All in favor. Richard? Yes. Doug? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Great. Thanks. I'm surprised it's taken this long to get one of these for that spot. Um, Amy? You just agents? jinxed us, Frank. What's that? You just jinxed us. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're on to the administrative items? Yep. Okay, so the first one I have on was um, Hummerock Beach reports of contractors working on beach with no permits. So um, I know some of you at least saw there was an email that went around with concerns from um, the Beach Commission, I think it is, on complaints about contractors specifically on Hummerock Beach working and disturbing the resource area um, with no permits. And so that um, Jim Boudreau had had asked me about it too, and and um, Maura Curran, um, the chairman of the select board, also was um, asking. I think she's a liaison on on that committee as well. Um, so 
the question was, what can can we discuss it publicly? Maybe um, talk about it a little bit and try to highlight some ways to um, draw attention to the matter. Um, maybe come up with a collaborative idea um, to get some information out that's not allowed to work on our public resources uh, without permits. Um, photos that, that what that went around. I think that those were from last year, maybe. Um, yes. Or maybe they were from this year. I'm I'm not sure, but of note, um, I was saying to Jim is we we haven't and to Jen too is we have not actually had any real complaints in Humrock this season. So um, can I, I add to why that, that is? Can I add to that, Amy? Yes, please. So so I you know from where I am south. I can absolutely say there's been nothing this year. There certainly was last year. Going north, I have not been up there um, in a few days, but there hadn't been, although there was certainly some town vehicles working this weekend because there was some flooding up towards the cliff. Not major, not nothing terribly or shattering, pretty normal stuff, actually. Um, it just, I don't think, has been an issue for this year. It certainly was last year. So, and that's, I can only speak to The contractors have learned they can't just call <laughs> there. Yeah. Well, on, they, they on just the work other hand, they're just smarter about it. <laughs> well, on, on the other hand, I have seen some on the riverside, not big stuff, but a little bit here and there, but not mm. on the ocean side. And, um, um, but I can only speak about Humrock. I've not toured the other beaches in town. Okay. Right. Well, I think we have our pulse on what happens pretty much on Peggotty. And Hummer Rock, I mean, it's tough to have eyes there all the time, especially on the weekends. Um, you know, residents who who called last year, we, you know, we were telling them if it's off hours, you know, and such that they should be calling Situate PD because nobody should be working on the beach without a permit. Um, there are, you know, permits that we do give out, minor um, administrative permits that we give post-storm season to facilitate uh, resident cleanup of their driveways to remove cobbles back to the beach. Um, but that's, those are like limited day jobs. So there's, there's no like manicuring of the beach. There's no like work work on the beach. It's really just return of that cobble, um, you know, the natural cobblestone to the beach. Um, which is serves as nourishment. So, um, yeah, that that's that that's what should be happening. I, I mean, I I'm sure that there are contractors that come in from out of town, um, you know, that we don't catch. But I'm not sure what what the best way to get the the largest audience is. You know what I mean? I think Frank and I just talked about it um, a little bit, like. Be careful what you wish for in some ways like if I mean if we were to put a sign down there i mean i don't know is that is that the best way to get the message out i'm not so sure or uh one of the things that the um that this committee was uh suggesting um was corey was going to send a letter out maybe a targeted mailing but i'm not so sure how effective that targeted mailings are you know whether they just get tossed in the uh, trash or not but um certainly the town um with our outreach efforts. I mean, I think people are aware that, you know, beaches are a precious natural resource and that they're um, not to be, you know, screwed around with. So. Amy, you, you and I did, I've talked about this a little bit. Richard, I appreciate your being there to keep an eye on things. Um, so, you know, it is a little bit of the wild west with no sheriff, um, in that area. And Amy even had the thought of, um, you know, maybe the town's, uh, one of the town signs that flash or, or have a sign to put up there around Memorial Day or a little bit before basically saying there's no work authorized in those areas without authorized. permission. But the other thought I had was, you know, we do have this collaboration with the police department, especially Craig Keefe. Is it worth it for us to, to ask them no different than having a road where a lot of people speed on or, or something to, to sit with, get with Craig and, and, and maybe 
map out a little bit of what's going on there and then see if maybe we could work with them if they could allocate a little time for him um to make a pass up and down there um i don't know what his hours are when he's there but sometimes a little more presence um is is the better thing and then people would say geez you know it's not going to be just you know you getting down there when you have an opportunity or 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 what or somebody there's going to be some real presence for some period of time and it usually happens about now everybody's trying to get their their house in order and and we're not trying to keep them from using it but we don't want people out you know grading the beach or or altering big areas and it might just be another way even if it's only a few times that that people would would realize that we were serious about it so I don't know whether they have the resources to do that for with us or not. Frank, I can only tell you that at this time of year, there is almost always police presence here in the winter. There isn't, but there almost always is 24 hours a day I yeah. think, around a home run. And if they were made aware of that, if we could get with, um, with Mark or, or with um Yeah. And just tell them. Yeah. Frank. I've had multiple conversations with Mark and, and Craig about, about this. And ju just the, another, um, I guess, hot issue a little bit is would would be people removing cobble from the beach and like taking it out in right in quantities that are not permitted because there's no removal of stone from the beach that's really allowed um but you do yep. get those random reports come in okay well we could only just keep trying i mean that's all all we could do and it's not just there i mean we've seen a flurry of things not only on the beaches but people's yards or woods or whatever um so all right yeah so so as a lead in to um enforcement I, we no, actually, is there one certificate of compliance uh, actually for, that one is a leftover from last meeting okay um and the minor modification minor mo request for minor modification is a leftover from last time too we, okay. we had an outstanding, we left it on, um, Andy had a question just about the project was proposing, I don't know, Jen, if you want to put up the, the map or not, but it was it's proposing to take, it's kind of a, it's very small house that very small. I was talking to Bob about this um, today, actually. And anyways, apparently there's like a, um, a hatch that goes down this is the way it is now and into the basement, which is where their laundry is. <laughs> so now they're there's they want to switch it up and pour an actual wall on that side. So Bob, from a zoning point of view, I think they're going for relief. And from a building point of view, it doesn't trigger substantial improvement. And this house does have orders. So apparently it it's okay. Uh, so that's and as a, okay. as a minor modification, I, I think it's it's okay. It's it's a small change to an already approved project. Okay. Oh, looks good. Um, okay. And then yep. back to the agenda. Enforcement, we've had pretty good response to the people that are listed on. And actually, next time I'm going to probably weed some of these off um, as resolved. But... And then the others that are on here are progress is being made, um, like wetland scientists are being hired and plans are being um, crafted to come up to replicate areas that were disturbed. Um, that's like a a pretty broad summary of that list. There's a little, one one that's one or two. There is a little bit of inaction. I need to prod a little bit further. Um, we can move on to orders. Well, right. Amy, can I ask a question on sure. enforcement? So um, do we have, I'm not trying to create work for you. You don't need extra work, but are there, are there enforcements that have just never been closed up from one, two, three years ago? And if there are, shouldn't we pull them out and see if we can get some action on them? I'm only asking that because I was going back through some previous stuff um, in the C of C files and, and I've, I saw that there were some that I've never seen that were drawn to a conclusion. And I'm just thinking, well, maybe they were, 
But if they aren't, they should be. Yeah. So if there's something in particular you're, you're thinking about, email I'll it send, to me. I'll send you, will... you a short list, but I'm just wondering yeah. if there are some like that, that just for whatever reason, you know, we, we sat out on enforcement and it's never been closed up, never been completed, whether it's a fine or just a minor thing that we needed to enforce. Could be. Okay. Well, Sounds good, Rich. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What is the conditions? I make a motion. We accept the orders of condition as written for 4th, 14th, 10th Ave and 208 CJC. I'll take a second on that. Second. Second from Jen. Oh, three-way tie. Give it to Jen. Give it to, <laughs> just give it to her. I second from Jen. All in favor. Richard, you're such a gentleman. <laughs> um, all in favor, Richard? Yes. And uh, and uh, Doug? Yes. And Brendan? Yes. Yeah, and reluctantly, I am as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. Have we got it all? I think yeah. so. Well, Maybe I've had a work. busy weekend, and I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go home. <laughs> Find your glasses. Go home and sleep after the wedding. Uh, well, the good news is that uh, Brittany Miller is now Brittany Baskin, and everything went well, and we had a lot of, <laughs> we had a great time. So, yeah. Hallelujah! There you go. Um. Yeah. When they when it they were say, when they were asking whether or not they would you know what's, what's the vows they were for better or for worse and it started to sprinkle I was thinking well this would be a good I test but the sun popped out enough and uh, and they had a great afternoon mm -hmm. and evening so good. yeah good good well good look at Eloise oh, look at her she's beautiful saying hello she's getting so big. She's got a great personality. Jen was good he enough does. to give us some tomato plants, and uh, I had a chance to visit with her. And um, there she she's is. got a good set of teeth going on the bottom there. On the bottom, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing on the top. But Hi, sweetie. On nope. the oh, she's so cunning. So cunning. Star of the number. show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's exciting. It is. Um. All right. Well, Jen, you'll have your work cut out for you. It'll, oh, it's it. it you'll be planning a wedding it, before it, you know it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Or at least you'll be watching the door for those for any uh, suitors. So. <laughs> oh, That's okay. He uh, really is rushing things, isn't he? Uh, you tell you what, it happens quicker than you think. Yeah. Most of us know that. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. We have someone yeah, we to voted. say they a motion to adjourn in a second. I already said that. I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. Second. Thanks, Brendan. All in favor? Um, just everybody can say aye. Bye. 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 Have a good night. Hallelujah. Good night. Thank you. Night.